Welcome to this week's end of day's update coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you're anywhere near the Columbia, South Carolina area, this last this next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Saturday morning, Sunday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, we'll be at Living Water Christian Outreach Center. We'll have a great time. So we got five services coming to you real soon. We'll get into some end times, get into some gifts of the Spirit. We'll have a great time. We're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord, and specifically the setup of nations for the Ezekiel 38 war, because that happens right after the rapture. And, you know, the second coming has sign after sign after sign in our book. I think it's about 78 or 79 signs. And it was interesting getting the book ready. People were like, some of the fact checkers were like, this really happened. Absolutely. They're blatant, exact, precise things the Bible said you'd see just before the coming of the Lord. So it's amazing. But when it comes to the rapture, it's such a mystery, just like the church age was a mystery. So you want to kind of see what happens just after that so that we can tell where we are. And man, you have the players for the Ezekiel 38 war. Even meeting this week, you've got Turkey, you've got Syria, you've got Russia with Iran literally coming in on a Zoom call. to. to, These are the players that will have a part of the Ezekiel 38 war. So it's amazing right in front of our eyes to watch the main uh, players come together. And don't even try to hold anything back. So, I mean, Turkey's talking about invading northern Syria. Russia's saying they can't do that. Uh, there's so many things happening with Russia this week. So let's get into everything that's happened. Let's pick up with some really radical uh, terrorist uh, attacks that got thwarted. Number one, the Israeli Defense Forces, which was the Mossad, warned Germany that there were some Iranians bringing in literally chemical weapons into Germany that were going to come down and do a chemical attack on Israel. This is in the last couple of days. They had all kinds of chemical weapons. It would have been horrific. There's been a lot of attacks on the uh, power grids in different, different countries. And then yesterday, you had literally uh, enriched uranium seized in London that was being flown into England for some Iranians to put together a dirty bomb. That's the big deal all the intelligence guys talked about was they were concerned about a dirty bomb getting built, getting snuck into Damascus, hauled down into Israel, and, and having a, a nuke go off in Tel Aviv. So you, you see the reality of all this even this last week. So you got in Israel, you got the Palestinians building buildings in areas that they're not supposed to in the West Bank. It's called Area C. Those are going to get demolished this week, so look for some crazy stuff to happen over that. Well, you can't build where you're not supposed to build, and you can't build on land that's not your land. It's Israel's land. So that's going to create some skirmishes. I do love this one that happened this week in Israel. You have the chief of police literally getting ready to allow some of the Temple Mount Institute to have a sacrifice maybe on the Temple Mount uh, coming this spring for Passover, which uh, for them to be allowed to do that, you you talk about all kinds of stuff breaking loose, all kinds of stuff's going to break loose. Just because the defense minister went, on, went up on the Temple Mount last week, they all went crazy. Wait till they start having an animal sacrifice on the Temple Mount. Why is that being pushed to do that? Because we're so close to the tribulation that will be happening in the trib. So man, you see all that stuff carrying over to us right now. So interesting things with China as well. You had a Japanese general say this last week. He said, literally, the U.S. is setting up a theater to have a massive war with China. So China has another, uh, of course, day of activity with all their jets being activated to buzz all around Taiwan. Same thing with their navy. So that's all happening. And then you've got a war game uh, with uh, Lebanon and Iran coming down on the border of Israel and Lebanon, bringing all kinds of artillery. Benjamin Netanyahu warned him, say, hey, you guys, if you, there's some red lines here. You get any closer and you're going to be annihilated. They're literally on the edge of the border of the Golan Heights. With that, you have such a bizarre, uh, you could call it political influx, of literally people trying to have a civil war in Israel. Can't stand the right-wing government that's trying to be strong and defensive. It, it is, it's interesting how things set up like this, because in America, you almost had America to get weak so that Russia could do what they were going to do, and Israel stays strong to protect their land. I mean, even with that, I never talk about this as far as our country goes. You had the White House in the United States of America at Christmas time have a drag queen speaking to everyone, along with satanic emblems all over the White House. You had goat's heads everywhere. I, I, emblems and symbols of satanic worship. So you had President Biden this last week coming up with a fake history for the Palestinians. Listen, the Palestinians have no history. It's so weird that it's a made-up history. A hundred years ago, there were no such things as Palestinians. I love what Hafez Assad said to Yasser Arafat, the head of the PLO, he said there are no such things as the Palestinian people. There were Turks, there were Arabs, there were Israelis, there were Jews, but the, the Palestinians was a made-up name. When you have... Uh, uh, the, the head of the Syrian country say that, 
to the PLO head. It's crazy. So many things are happening. You had Russia warned this week. Medev said, we're sending uh, uh, submarines into the edge of the Atlantic with hypersonic missiles. That hypersonic missile that they're touting, 9,000 miles an hour, and they're parking it in the Atlantic. Have another sub that's going up in the northern Mediterranean. So you've got Russia uh, counting that. You have the Ukraine getting more and more weaponry so that Putin said, hey, literally all of NATO supporting the Ukraine to fight with Russia. Oh, yeah, because Russia's doing things that nations aren't supposed to do. Even though the Ukraine's not a member of NATO, yet NATO's sneaking in weaponry. You've got, <laughs> this is kind of crazy, you've got troops being taught in Oklahoma how to set up Patriot missiles in the Ukraine. So everything is setting up for global World War III. So we shouldn't be afraid. It's just what the Bible said you'd see right for the coming of the Lord. Remember, Jesus said, don't be troubled, uh, don't be concerned, be not deceived. He said, I want you happy, hopeful, and comforted. There were five things about the coming of the Lord, and it was all about having joy. Paul talked about the rapture so that we'd be happy and hopeful. All this information is not for an escape theology. It's for a hustle theology to get more done in a shorter period of time. I had a guy go, Joe, if you teach on the coming of the Lord, just get everybody's hopes up. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's the hope that purifies us even as we're pure. So let's go back to the Word. You go back to the Word, you get all the signs. Remember, for one verse, there is about the first coming, eight times more about the second coming. Jesus said the generation that sees Israel made a nation and Jerusalem won back. That generation is when He's coming back. That, those are two main signs. That happened in our generation. But go beyond that. You have the Hebrew language restored. You have the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. You had the Temple Mount Institute in position to have sacrifices. You had Jacob's 20,000 sheep show up just in the last couple months. All of that stuff. You had the ritual baths around the Temple Mount fill up with water. You had foxes on the Temple Mount. You had fish in the Dead Sea. Then you had the Dead Sea this last year turn blood red uh, where Sodom and Gomorrah were. And that was on the Day of Atonement. Crazy. You have 172 different species of predatory birds that start showing up in the land. I mean, that's just radical. You have the cleanup crew in Israel right now for the Ezekiel 38 war and for the Battle of Armageddon. So all these different groups are in position. What's the church doing? If, if Russia can get in position in the Ukraine, if birds can show up, the fish can show up, foxes can show up, what's the church doing? Are we really living in the last days? Yes, this is it. How blatant does it have to get before we act? The, all this information is for us to be soul winners, do everything we can. We don't fit church into our life. It is our life. So there's many more signs. You had the blood red moons. You had the Bethlehem star. All of that. You had the Bethlehem star. You had Jupiter, Regulus, Venus come together at the same time. Constellation was Virgo. This last year, you had NBC Nightly News. You have a celestial event, Jupiter, Regulus, Venus. Regulus does retrograde motion, forms a crown over Jupiter. Why? It's the first time in 2,000 years, Bethlehem star. What was the constellation this last year? Leo. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Wow, he's coming. The king's coming. You get into the blood red moons. You get into all the activity in the heavens in 2017. This is it. People go, is it really it? This is it. I heard people go, all oh, these signs have all happened before. No, they've never happened before. So uh, this is what we do. We take the information and go, what can I do to obey God? Let's surrender our hearts to do His bidding, to do His will, to be a voice, to be a witness, to be a warning voice. You can be buying a cheeseburger and say, hey, look at all the signs. The Lord's coming back. Well, He loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to strengthen you. We get all this information because He loves you so much. He's not mad at you. He's not frustrated with you. He loves you. Let that permeate your being. Remember, perfect love casts out fear. This is a season to have zero fear, have great joy, great excitement. We're about to see the King face to face. Come on, you're going to see those eyes as a flame of fire, feet like undefined brass, voice of many waters, God Himself, Jesus of Nazareth. Wow. Hey, have a blessed week. We'll see you this next Wednesday. We'll come back. Interesting to see what power grids try to get hit. I didn't even talk about earthquakes in, in Malaysia. you got earthquakes in, in, uh, all over the world happening right now. Crazy weather up in Northern California. Uh, solar flares. All kinds of stuff that you don't can't have time. This, all the asteroid stuff. The King's coming back. Have a blessed, wonderful week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the end of day's update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the edu and we'll see you next week. What love to overshine.